two years ago, Insta360 made the most revolutionary 360 camera ever, the Insta360 ONE X. Two years later, Insta360 has made a sequel, the Insta360 ONE X2. So let's see what it can do. It just looks like I had a camera crew following me the entire time, but I was by myself. So it's just amazing to have all these creative possibilities in a pocket sized camera. If you are new to 360 cameras, then you are probably wondering, how did I pull off some of these shots? Here is a quick crash course. The One X2 has two fisheye lenses, the front lens and the back lens. Each lens can see more than 180 degrees. Yep, that's correct. This lens can even see behind itself, and it's the same for the back lens. The side of the camera is called a stitch line, and if you place anything thinner than the stitch line into it, like this selfie stick for example, it will be automatically invisible. And it's this invisible selfie stick effect that gives the illusion of a floating camera. Now in the Insta360 app, it will automatically stitch together the front lens and the back lens to make a 360 degree video. Then all you need to do is choose which view in the 360 degree video you want to show your audience. There are a lot of improvements from the original One X to the One X2. The first one being going from a non-touch screen to a touch screen. If you want the best video quality possible, then you need to use manual exposure settings. But on the original One X, you can only set auto exposure settings on the camera itself. If you want to set manual exposure settings on the One X, then you need to connect it to your phone to set the ISO and shutter speed. But with the One X2, you now have a touch screen so you can look around your 360 video. And if you swipe left from the right of the screen, you now have the option to set manual exposure settings and you can choose your shutter speed, your ISO, your white balance and color profile. So this saves you so much time when you're out filming because you don't need to constantly connect the camera to your phone to set the ISO and shutter speed. The second big improvement is battery life. So with the original One X, I would normally get about 45 to 60 minutes of video recording, but the brand new One X2 has a 55% B 
bigger battery. So I took it out on a few day shoots on a couple of occasions and on average I was getting about 90 minutes to 105 minutes of video recording. So yeah, that's a huge improvement. If you do decide to buy multiple batteries, then I highly recommend the fast charging hub and when you put a battery inside, the LED lights will light up and it will go green when it's fully charged, yellow when it's half charged and red when it's low battery. And this is just a much more convenient way to charge multiple batteries than putting it one at a time inside your One X2. The third big improvement is waterproofness. So the original One X was not waterproof at all. You had to buy this Venture case to make it waterproof up to five meters. But now the One X2, as you see it, is waterproof up to 10 meters without a case. So if you want to do water sports above the water, then you don't need to worry about it getting wet. The fourth big improvement is the build quality. Now with the original One X, there used to be an issue where if you used it for extreme action sports, and there was a lot of vibrations, there was the possibility that the base of the One X could get ripped out. Now with the One X2, they've made the camera body much more robust. The One X2 camera body is quite different from the One X. The battery and USB-C port is now on the left hand side of the camera. The battery door is built into the battery and the micro SD card slot is now inside the battery compartment. The USB-C port is now over here for charging and transferring data. On the front side, there is now a one inch circular touchscreen and one less button. The new compartments are designed to keep the One X2 waterproof up to 10 meters without a case. The ring of the One X2 has been redesigned to allow the lens guards to be attached. The power button and speaker has been moved to the right hand side of the camera. The top of the One X2 is now plain and the base looks more robust to handle extreme vibrations. You can now film 150 degree video with the One X2. That means it's only using one lens and not two lenses. So you can choose whether you want to film with the front lens or the back lens. The One X2 has horizon leveling. So you can rotate it clockwise or anti-clockwise and the horizon will always be level. And this works for 150 and 360 degree video. All the video recording modes on the One X and One X2 are exactly the same. So you still have 5.7K 30 as your highest resolution in frame rate. Then you've got your 4K 50 and 30 frames per second and 3K 100 frames per second. In terms of video quality, there's very subtle improvements from the One X to the One X2. So the One X2 can now record in H.265. It can record in a higher bit rate. It has enhanced color science and a new vivid color profile. There is a HDR video mode which gives you more dynamic range, but you can only use it when the One X2 is still, otherwise you will get ghosting effects and it is limited to 25 frames per second. In standard video mode, there is a log color profile which can give you more dynamic range and more color control in post. Annoyingly, the Red Dot of Death has carried over from the One X to the One X2. So if you are filming in bright sunny weather conditions, there is a chance you will see a small red dot when the camera faces the sun in a certain direction. A lot of us was looking for a larger sensor, more resolution, and that was also on my wish list too. But I think Insta360 aims the One X series of cameras at beginners, so it has to be affordable and easy to use. That's why these cameras have a mobile first workflow. And our mobile phones are just not powerful enough to handle anything over 5.7K, but that will obviously change in the future. So for those of us that are looking for a larger sensor, more resolution, that will require a desktop workflow, a bigger camera and a bigger price tag. And that camera will sit in between the One X2 and the Insta360 Pro. Is Insta360 making a semi-pro camera? I don't know, that's just my theory. The One X2 has a lot of photo modes. There is standard photo mode, pure short photo mode, night short photo mode, HDR photo mode, Insta pano mode. So to show you the difference between all these modes, I took a photo one after the other in the same location to compare. The photo quality is more than good enough for social media. Most people are gonna view these photos on their phone and it's going to look sharp and clear enough. To get the best photo quality, it really depends on the available light in your situation, 
the mode you are using, the settings you are using, and whether you're using a RAW or JPEG workflow. So you need to just test all these settings and modes and find the best workflow for you in your given scenario. Insta Pano mode is a brand new photo mode on the One X2, and it will basically take a ultra wide panorama using one lens, and you can either take a standard pano or a HDR pano. Now let's do an audio test with the internal microphones. So for this test, I had the One X2 about 30 centimeters away from my face. This is an internal audio test with the Insta360 One X2, and I have the camera about 30 centimeters away from my face. So to do this test, I'm gonna read a short passage from a children's story, and then you can let me know how it sounds in the comments below. I woke up in the night to a noise from the kitchen. So off I set out on a fact-finding mission. Whatever it was, I did not have a clue. As I got closer, I heard a loud chew. The fridge door was open with food on the ground. A tiny blue penguin was looking around. The internal audio quality of the One X2 sounds pretty good. As long as you keep the camera close to your face, within 15 or 30 centimeters. I haven't tested an external microphone yet with the Insta360 mic adapter. So once I figure out a way to rig an external microphone on the One X2, I'll make sure to post another video. The stitch line quality of the One X2 is just as good as the One X, even though it has a slightly thicker body. And in this example, I am waving my hand just 15 centimeters in front of the camera's stitch line. So you can see how it affects it. And now I'm just walking back and forth so you can see the stitch line effect. For me, what makes Insta360 stand out from the crowd is their workflow. They have the best workflow to film, edit, and publish a reframed 360 video just using your phone. So I wanna show you a quick example of how you reframe a 360 video using the Insta360 app. And I'm gonna edit a shot which you saw in the sample footage. I call it a follow shot because it looks like you have a cameraman following you from behind. When you record 360 video with the One X2, this is what it will look like on the editing app. So here you can see me, so this is the front view, this is the back view, the left view, the right view, the top view, and the bottom view. So you basically have this spherical video that you need to reframe. So you need to tell the app which view you want to show your audience. So should I show myself, or should I show this statue? or should I show Piccadilly Circus, for example. But before we do the reframing, you need to choose your aspect ratio. So over here, if you tap nine by 16, it will change to 16 by nine. So this is good for YouTube videos. And if I tap it again, you'll get the one by one format, which is good for your Facebook or Instagram feed. If I tap it again, you'll get the cinematic format. And if I tap it again, you'll get the nine by 16 format which is good for TikTok or Instagram stories. Now the next step is to trim your video to get rid of the parts where you start and stop recording. So to do this, tap the scissor icon and I'm gonna scroll the timeline to the seventh second and start my video here. So I'll tap the scissor icon here and I'm gonna scroll forward to make this shot seven seconds long, which is about here and tap the scissor icon so now this highlighted part of the video is the part of the video I want to keep and I'll tap the tick to confirm. So now I'll go to the beginning of my video and at the beginning of my video, I want to show this statue to my audience. So I'm gonna position the statue in the middle, add a pivot point here and to get rid of this fisheye distortion, I'm gonna change the view to linear. Now. One second later, I still want to show the audience this statue, so I'm going to position it over here and add a pivot point. So now the app knows at the beginning of my video, I want to show this statue to my audience for one second. Now over the next two seconds, I want to reframe to show myself walking up to Piccadilly Circus. So I'll position myself here and add a pivot point. Then I'll go to the end of the video, make sure I'm in the middle and then add a pivot point. So now you have a video which looks like this. And then you can export your video and upload it onto social media.
I can literally talk about this app for hours because there is so much functionality, but there is one other feature worth mentioning. You can combine multiple Reframed 360 videos into a single timeline to make a story. And there's just no other app that comes close to what the Insta360 app offers. If you want to get the best video and photo quality out of the One X2, then you need to download and install Insta360 Studio on Windows and Mac. Insta360 Studio can do a couple of things. So the first one is that it can export your raw Insta360 files into new files, which can be imported into your favorite video editor, like Final Cut Pro or Cyberlink Power Director. The second thing it can do is reframe your 360 video in the free capture tab. So it can do some basic things like add pivot points, change aspect ratio, and add speed. It's not advanced as the app, so those are the only basic things you can do. And the third thing it does is install a plugin where you can directly drag and drop your raw Insta360 files directly into Premiere Pro without the need to export it via Insta360 Studio first. So it saves you so much time when you want to start editing your Insta360 footage. Here is a quick overview of the One X2 user interface. So if I tap on the screen and drag it around, you can look around your 360 video. If you tap the double arrow icon, you can switch between the back and front lens more easily. If you tap 5.7K30, this is where you can change your video resolution and frame rate settings. If you tap the video icon, you can change your video mode or change into photo mode or you can save a preset. If you tap 360 mode, you can switch into 150 degree mode so you can film with one lens only and you can film a 9x16 video. So you can film TikTok videos with your One X2 if you want to. The highest video resolution in this mode is 1440p at 50 frames per second and you can change it into a 16x9 if you want to. If you swipe down from the top of the screen, then you have your general menu icons like brightness, screen lock, LED on, quick capture, connect your AirPods, wind noise reduction on or off, voice control, so you can say start and stop recording, and then you just have your general settings. If you swipe left from the right of the screen, then you have your exposure settings, so you can either expose automatically or manually, so now you can set your ISO and shutter speed. They also have some new modes called shutter priority and isolated, which I'll need to look into in more detail. If you swipe up from the bottom of the screen, you have shortcuts, so you can switch between time-lapse, video, and photo mode quickly. And if you swipe right from the left of the screen, you can then see all the footage that you've taken. You can delete it over here, or if you tap this bottom icon, then you can see a preview of more files in one go, so it's easier to see lots of files. And that's it. There are a few good things to know before you consider buying the One X2. So to get the best out of this camera, you do need a high-end smartphone. So I'm talking about a flagship iPhone, Samsung, Xiaomi, Huawei, Xperia, or Google Pixel. If you don't have a high-end smartphone, then you may experience uh, lagging in the app, crashing, uh, long export times, and connection issues. If you want to edit 360 video on your Mac or PC, then I recommend a minimum computer spec of a latest i7 processor, 16 gigs of RAM, and a dedicated four gig graphics card. I found the One X pouch really convenient because when you want to charge the One X, you can put it into the pouch to protect the lenses and charge the camera at the same time. But with the One X2, the USB-C port is quite high. So when I want to charge it and protect the lenses by putting it in the pouch, it's not gonna go all the way down. So it's gonna look like the One X2 has a top hat. So I highly recommend to protect the lenses that you buy the lens cap, which is an additional purchase, to put it over the lenses to protect it and you can charge it at the same time. This will be ideal when you're going to be charging it in your bag or maybe around the home. The micro SD card I recommend for the One X2 is the Sandisk Extreme V30 Class 10 U3A2. The number one biggest mistake that new 360 camera owners make 
is putting their 360 camera on the light camera stand, leaving it unattended outside, then a big gust of wind comes and blows the camera down. And you've now lost your 360 camera. And that's happened to myself as well. So you don't want that to happen to your One X2 because the lenses are not replaceable. So if you do break one of your One X2 lenses, you will need to send it off to China to get it repaired. And that can cost $100 or more, or you need to replace your One X2 altogether. So the best solution to this problem is to invest in a stable monopod. And this is the best 360 monopod made by myself. And it will reduce the chance of your 360 camera getting blown over by the wind. So I'll leave a link to this in the video description. The One X2 will be on sale for $429.99. And if you are upgrading from the One X, then the bigger battery, the touch screen, the USB-C port, the better build quality, the waterproofness, and the Insta360 app makes the One X2 a worthy upgrade. If you are taking a leap into 360 for the first time, then the One X2 is the ultimate beginner's 360 camera. It just has a much better form factor than the One R. So the side of the camera body is much thinner, which will give you a better stitch line than the thicker body of the One R. And this is just so much more pocket friendly than this, which is quite bulky. But the One R is still good when you want to change in between your one inch mod, 4K mod and 360 mod. I've been using the One X2 for about three weeks now. And this is my go-to 360 camera. It's just never been easier to capture amazing 360 videos on the go. I will leave a link to the One X2 in the video description so you can check it out for yourself. So that's everything you need to know about the One X2 so far. I'm sure you have a lot of questions. So if you post your questions in the comments below, I will make a follow-up video to this video answering all your questions and post that video on Sunday. So make sure to subscribe so you don't miss that video and I'll see you then.